multiple homotopy groups of spheres. And Adams has uh, written uh, a series of papers on the image of J homomorphism. So he studied the image of J homomorphism in the early 60s. And um, the cool thing is that the image of J homomorphism produces a periodic family uh, inside the table homotopy groups of spheres. So in, inside this huge and unknown chaos, it gives some kind of order or some understood part. So, uh, so this thing inside here gives uh, computable subgroups. Now, uh, the expectation was that uh, these computable subgroups actually split as a direct summand. And um, Adams has almost proved that this is true. Uh, he proved it up to a factor. And the, the result was true, modulo the so-called Adams conjecture. So yes, modulo a statement called Adams conjecture. Now, uh, the conjecture was, in fact, proven in different ways by different people. And the statement itself is interesting, but also the proofs, uh, as far as I understand, led to a lot of progress in topology because new methods were introduced while people were trying to prove the statement and uh, many new ideas were developed. So it was maybe so since the, um, okay, so this was proved. Uh, well, some of the proofs were by, sorry, I'll, I'll finish writing it here. Some of the proofs were by Quillen. Uh, and so this was 68. And uh, uh, Sullivan uh, in 74. Uh, Becker Gottlieb, sorry for making it small, uh, 75, and this, so on. So there were different approaches given, and uh, such ideas as localizations and completions, and a homotopy theory, and the becker gottlieb transfer map appeared in this work. So uh, it turned out to be a statement that brought a lot of progress in topology. And instead of telling you what the statement is, I have a secret agenda of telling you the analog of the statement in algebraic geometry, and then saying, oh, now replace like all the things back with topological uh, analogs, and you'll get the topological statement. OK, so uh, let me explain the statement in algebraic geometry. So the, ana the analog of Adam's conjecture, which is the motivic Adam's conjecture. OK. Um, so I haven't said anything uh, so much yet, but later, please feel free to ask questions. I'm you know, uh, maybe I'll be able to answer them. If not, we can discuss them later. So anyway, feel free. Um, OK, so uh, we start with a base scheme. Let me call it S. And we will be living uh, in SH of S, so in the uh, motivic stable homotopy category of S, uh, the place where generalized cohomology theories of smooth S schemes are living. So I guess you have already learned about it. Uh, in the past 10 days. Uh, so let me just remind that this were P1 spectra uh, in motivic spaces over S. And so this category is uh, denoted H of S, so the unstable uh, homotopy category of S. And um, so these are A1 homotopy invariant sheaves uh, on smooth schemes of sheaves of spaces on smooth schemes over S. And importantly, uh, this is not just a category. It has uh, a symmetric monoidal structure. So it has symmetric monoidal structure induced by the smash product of spaces. OK, so this is the abstract playground in, in which the story will happen. And the objects that we are interested in are actually very basic. So uh, 
we just want to take any vector bundle over S. And associate to it its tom space. So tom space is an analog of uh, one point compactification of a uh, vector bundle in topology. And so algebraically, what you want to do is uh, this um, you may want to uh, take a quotient sheaf of uh, the vector bundle by the complement of the zero section. Uh, and up to A1 homotopy, this is the same as taking, uh, sorry, up to A1. This is A1 equivalent to taking uh, projectivization of E plus trivial bundle and quotienting by the projectivization of E. So uh, I think, and uh, so in particular, the, the easiest example is when E is a trivial, uh, so just, the, the trivial uh, rank one bundle, then this uh, tom space is just denoted T. Okay, and so uh, it is the quotient of A1 by A1 minus zero. But you can show, and I think this is an exercise, I heard it's an exercise in one of the classes, to show that this is up to A1 homotopy, the same thing as P1. And if you have not done this exercise, please do it. It's, uh, you can do this. It's uh, nice and concrete. Um, okay, and uh, so the um, the abuse of notation that I will be doing in this talk, as I said, we want to consider things in the stable homotopy category. So I will consider. So while these are uh, objects in the unstable homotopy category, I want to consider them in the stable. So uh, I will so notation. So for me, this guy will be living in. SH, and I apologize for abuse of notation. Okay, so we'll be looking at them stably. Good so far? Okay, so now uh, what we want uh, to, to, to formulate the Adams conjecture, we need to begin with an analog of uh, J homomorphism uh, in the algebra geometric world. And so uh, what we do is we define the motivic J homomorphism. So, um, it will look a bit different, so don't get scared just yet. Uh, believe me that this is the right thing to do. So uh, what we want to do, this will be a map from algebraic K-theory instead of uh, topological K-theory. So uh, from the group of vector bundles on S into, okay, into something more scary. So let's say we'll start with uh, mapping into SH. So it's just a map that sends a vector bundle to its tom space. And uh, so the cool thing is that, um, so these are vector bundles and um, virtual vector bundles living here. So the, uh, the concept of the tom space makes sense for the virtual vector bundles because, specifically because we have considered P1 spectra. So we have made P1, hence the tom space of the trivial vector bundle invertible. And when we have done that, we have automatically made all of these guys also tensor invertible here. And so uh, this map actually lands in the groupoid of tensor invertible objects, so the Picard groupoid. So this is just notation for tensor invertible objects. And um, so this is a group homomorphism, uh, so which takes direct sum of vector bundles to the tensor product of their tom spaces. And uh, well, you might ask, what the hell does it have to do with, with this? Well, we have replaced topological K-theory with algebraic K-theory, but also, okay, there is something funny happening uh, with the stable homotopy groups. And the reason why this business appears is that actually, so the, the stable homotopy groups appear classically because this is a space which has almost the same homotopy groups. So, well, so this is a space whose homotopy groups are shifted stable homotopy groups in the motivic context. So there is a canonical map like that. 
um, which is an isomorphism on homotopy groups above the zeroth one. So all I'm saying in this remark uh, is that this is the right replacement for um, the topological J homomorphism. No magic has happened. Uh, Well, yes. Um, yes. Well, yes. Uh, I will. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. So, in the topology, you would take instead of a scheme, you would think of a topological space, and you would take the topological space to be a to as n-dimensional sphere. Now, uh, okay. So we have this map, and the uh, basic question that one might ask is. Uh, okay, so uh, whether this map, okay, so a uh, naive question uh, is whether this map is injective. And, uh, okay, so in the, uh, often people consider the stable homotopy category over a field, and so if S were just a field, then yes, the answer would be that it is injective. But in general, this is uh, far from being true. So, um, so if you're a field, then sure, but uh, in general, no. Okay. And so, for example, uh, if you take, uh, well, the simplest case, if you take a line bundle, then Uh, you will see that you can show that the tom space of a line bundle and its dual actually give, uh, so are isomorphic. So this was this quotient. You can uh, construct the isomorphism with the tom space of E dual. And so as long as you take a scheme where a vector bundle and its dual are not the same, um, well, don't have the same class here, like take projective space, so then uh, you will see, so, so for the projective space, you will then see that the map is not injective. Okay. And so the Adams conjecture concerns how far this map is from being injective. And uh, I'm almost ready to state it, but and ironically, to state it, I need to define Adams operations. So, okay, there's a lot of atoms uh, going on. So the last piece of uh, information that we need is that um, there exist atom separations. Sorry, uh, just, I just took a line bundle. But, uh, but, 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 but yes, can you ignore me? Uh, yes, 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 yes. Ignore me everywhere. I don't know what is going on here. Someone has been writing this better. Whatever, you can take actually you don't need even a line bundle. We will see why line bundles come up later. But just take a vector model and it's dual, and you'll win. Um, okay, so the thing is we will see in a bit that there, this is an example of a more general phenomenon when uh, the, the J homomorphism gives the same image on, on different objects. So this is, will be the basic example. And uh, to say more generally when it happens, I need to tell you what are atom separations, or at least mention that. So these are operations on, uh, on the group of vector bundles on S, so on the uh, zeroth case theory. And uh, so this is something that for every integer, you have an kth atoms operation. So they're denoted psi k. And what they do is, uh, so they're very easily defined on line bundles. So on the line bundle, they're defined to be just the kth uh, tensor power of L. And then more generally, on, on other vector bundles, they're extended uh, to all vector bundles via splitting principle and then to K0 in such a way that they are um, uh, functorial ring homomorphisms on K0. So defined in general via splitting principle. Sorry, constructed by 
Okay, with all that in mind, I can finally formulate the um, Adams conjecture. Or rather, I will tell you what we have proved. So the main theorem is as follows. Okay, uh, so we need this, the base scheme uh, to be a, li uh, a little bit nice for things to work. So uh, we ask it to be a connected regular scheme over field. And uh, so the statement is that for any vector bundle, And any number um, okay so the statement is a little tricky let me uh, give you first a naive approximation to the statement so um, what we have observed there that the Tom uh, space of a vector bundle and its dual uh, are the same and uh, taking a dual is the minus first Adam separation on line bundles right so uh, the first naive guess is oh Maybe actually a uh, vector bundle and uh, its kth atom separation always have the same image under J homomorphism. So that's a naive approximation. Uh, so maybe we'd like to say something like that this Tom space of a vector bundle is the same as Tom space of its atom separation, sorry, kth atom separation. So this would be true. Um, Let's say when k is minus one on line, on, on line bounds. Okay, so this is not true in general. And to make it correct, we have to be a little more, um, um, okay, to, to, to uh, put some stuff here and there so that it becomes correct. So the statement is that there is a number n. For every vector bundle, you can find a number such that when you take a k to the n copies of e here and k to the n copies there, then these things become the same in SH. So you have to take k to the n times this guy, k to the n times that guy. And uh, we'd like to say that they are uh, isomorphic in SH. This is not quite what we have proven. We have proven it modular inverting the, uh, modular inverting the characteristic of the field if it's P, so inverting the exponential characteristic. Um, you know. Um, okay, so you can, okay, this is making the statement a bit weaker, but you can ignore this um, because in this statement, this um, simplification, mm, weakification. I don't know the English word for it, is a mild thing, so you can ignore it uh, for the moment. Let me just rewrite it in. Yeah. And it does depend on the vector bundle. It does not depend on this. I think it's more tricky. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so let me rephrase uh, the same thing uh, a little. Um, uh, a little more simply. So, um, <laughs> so I will just rewrite the same thing, just maybe slightly more concretely. So, in other words, um, for every uh, vector bundle, or more generally, for every virtual vector bundle. Uh, when we look at the J homomorphism of uh, E minus the case uh, atom separation on E, we would like to say that this is, okay, naively we would maybe want that this is zero in, uh, in pi zero peak of SH. Uh, 
but this is not quite uh, zero. This is zero uh, up to k torsion. So there is some n such that this thing becomes zero. So for E, a vector bundle or a virtual vector bundle. And um, so it could be an exercise to deduce the classical Adams conjecture from, from this business, but roughly you should replace uh, a scheme with a finite CW complex and vector bonds with real vector bundles. And for Adams purposes, you'd want the CW complex to be a sphere, but it also makes sense more generally. Uh, and let me give you some examples to claim that all these uh, difficulties are necessary. So that a simpler version of the statement wouldn't work. While you're arranging the story, um, you formulated the first naive statement on Luke based on Luke's case, but then you yeah, if I took. Okay, so I didn't, uh, yeah. No, so the thing is when I put here S to be just a field, then yes, no, no, we won't win. But if I take, so it makes sense to rephrase this in topology and take X to be S to be, like complex to be a sphere, not just a point. Oh, I see. Okay, so some examples. Yes, All right. So uh, the basic thing that, let me just write down what I have already said is that, um, so for k minus one, we hold right away. So no need to do this funny business with, with so this is the funny business. Uh, and no need to go p1 stably. But in, in general, we do need, so, uh, believe me that we need uh, to, to go to this stable territory. Um, so I just want to uh, give an example when Tom spaces are the same uh, stably but not the same unstably just for you to have uh, something to, to keep in mind. So if you take Tom space of O of minus two uh, over P1. Uh, this is the same as Tom space of the trivial bundle stably. Um, but they are not isomorphic unstably. So not in H. Uh, and that's because, so if they were, uh, you, I mean, to, to how one, does one check that? If they were isomorphic unstably, they would in particular be isomorphic after, say, over complex numbers, after complex serialization in topology. And in topology, one can show that this guy becomes the Tom space of the tangent bundle on the two-dimensional sphere, and it does not split unstably. So, uh, so one can check this in already in topology. Okay, so uh, this gives a hint that in general we do need to work stably for this to make sense. And uh, maybe the more um, mysterious aspect is that we do need this like to twist k to the n times. And so uh, the, uh, the simplest example, I guess, and I'll just tell you that it works. Uh, so let's say take k equal two and uh, take again O of minus one over projected line. Uh, then uh, so uh, one can show that uh, so Tom spaces of O of minus one and O of minus two are not the same. Uh, 
so, uh, okay. uh, so one can distinguish them using Steenard squares, uh, but, um, but uh, okay. so um, that statement itself uh, would not work. But if you take this big N to be uh, one, then it already works. So, uh, so we need this business, and already the big number n equal to one works. Okay. Um, maybe. Uh, so, any questions? Um, so uh, a couple remarks to, to say is that, so uh, I'm not being completely honest with you because in topology, it's not just known an analog of that. It's also known that this kind of differences uh, and uh, k to the power of copies of those, they uh, are not only in the kernel of the J-homorphism, they also generate the kernel of J-homorphism. And we don't know if that is true motivically. So uh, topologists do know more. And on the other hand, we are in a worse position uh, because, um, we, well, if we wanted to prove something like that, we would not be able to just copy a proof from topology and replace all the words. And uh, for example, a proof that we we're trying to imitate in topology uses that in topology, this, the analog of this creature is going to be an infinite loop space, but we don't know if uh, it is an infinite P1 loop space motivically, so we cannot uh, use that argument. Uh, I'm telling this just so, so that you feel sorry for us and, uh, and uh, bear with me when I tell you ideas from the proof. So uh, uh, the next thing would be me trying to tell you ideas, some ideas from the proof. Uh, it's a time to, to ask something if you want. Uh, Okay, can someone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So actually, okay. So uh, we would we <coughs> the the good thing to do is to define a map from the K-theory space to the Picard groupoid, which we can definitely do. It's just that we don't need it for the purpose of this talk, so I didn't talk about it. But sure. No. 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 <laughs> Our power is that x can be, or s can be any. I, I, sorry, I, I can't. We can look into it later. For me to try to prove to you that uh, by choosing different s, we actually get more freedom, and we get the analog of Adam's conjecture in topology. Yeah. Sorry, one sec. So here you would just have uh, a few more copies. Um, so, yeah, I think. So. Yeah. What? I couldn't. I can't hear you. Sorry. What? Oh, it's not invisible. It's, it's, it may be invisible because I wrote it in small letters, but it's here. Oh. <laughs> um, okay, so no, here I just rewrote this a little more concretely. Not, nothing new has been introduced in these two lines. Just, okay, are we good? So uh, my plan uh, is to tell you a bit about the ideas that we use uh, in the proof. And um, okay, so actually, uh, vector bundles are very nice, but um, you can forget uh, about vector bundles. I will be telling you a story about line bundles. So they're like the proof consists of two big parts: prove it for line bundles and reduce from for all vector bundles to line bundles case. I will be talking about the line bundles case. So, uh, which means that you can forget about atoms operations for us. They will be just tensoring uh, with the right power 
of the bundle. Um, but before we get there, I'd like to say a few words uh, vaguely and not give uh, the justice to the concept of A1 degree. Did anyone properly introduce it in their lectures? Yes, yes. great. So you know everything about A1 degree. Perfect. OK. Um, OK, so then um, I will still remind you a bit, but I'm glad that you have already learned about it. So the question that we want to address, given our main theorem that we want to prove, is when a Tom spaces, when a map of Tom spaces, aka a map of like spherical vector bundles, is an equivalence. And so first, uh, the most, okay, the, the basic case, so the trivial case is when you have tom spaces of uh, trivial bundles of the same rank. So you're just mapping the motivic sphere to itself, and you're wondering when this map is an equivalence. And in topology, this would be a question about, you look at the ma uh, map of a sphere to itself, and you ask when that uh, is uh, an isomorphism, and that would be determined by its degree. So maps, it's okay. So if your trivial case E is trivial, and uh, so in topology, you would look at a map from a sphere to itself, because that's a trivial spherical uh, vector bundle. And so uh, this would be determined by its degree, which was a number. And as you have learned, in the motivic world, the analog of this uh, degree, which is a number, will be living in the then. Uh, uh, so, as you know, integers should be thought of, at least at this conference, as the zeroth stable homotopy group of spheres. Uh, so, then the analog, uh, motivically, is the uh, motivic um, zeroth uh, stable homotopy group, which, as we know by theorem of Morel, is uh, the grot de Quid group. So, um, so this would be degree. OK, so um, I'm a bit afraid. So I want to I wanna be a bit vague here. And uh, OK, so let's say a one degree lives in pi 0 motivic. So that would be, OK, I'm roughly, OK, this is a rough thing to say. So uh, the growth and decrease group. And so the precise statement that you must have seen is that uh, so let's say f is a field then uh, so uh, the a1 degree uh, gives you an isomorphism between unstable um, homes so homes in the unstable uh, category between um, so this our trivial tom spaces so a n quotient by a n minus zero to itself. Uh, so this is the same thing as the grotten de group. Sorry. So this map gives an isomorphism to the grotten de group of the base uh, of the field, which is the, as I said, the uh, pi zero motivic of, um, of the motivic sphere spectrum. And so what this says is that over a point. A1 degree knows everything. It knows whether a given map of Tom spaces over a point is an isomorphism or not. So the moral, moral does not fit here. Uh, sorry. Ah, whoa. why are you here? Okay. Ah, uh, yes, you have a imprecise lecture here. Okay, so uh, let me. So let me just uh, summarize this uh, vaguely. So the moral is that a one degree, which is an invariant living in the grotten de Quid group, knows everything over a point.
now, uh, so an example where, okay, uh, sorry, if you have already seen this example, but this is the basic example to keep in mind. Say you have a map just from the uh, A1 term space of the rank one bundle. So a map to itself, which sends the coordinate to its mth power, then uh, the A1 degree is, um, so it's denoted M epsilon, which stands for, uh, for something that we want to be realized to a number M when we look over complex numbers. So when M can be divided by two, this is M, t uh, M half, half of M uh, times one plus minus one. And okay, so the, when M is even and the, the other reasonable thing to do when M is odd. So one plus M minus one. Okay, same thing. Okay, so uh, just keep in mind that a one degree is a quadratic form, which is realized to the number that you would expect in topology, but it's, uh, it, it knows more information. It's a more delicate invariant. Now, um, okay, so um, what we, um, <laughs> um, one sec, uh, then I'd like to, uh -huh. so, um, great. So this is the simple case for, for uh, trivial vector bundles. Now we, I'm explaining this because we will use this in the non-trivial case. So clearly our theorem is about a non-trivial vector bundle. So how do we use it? So the non-trivial case So uh, what we prove is um, that, okay, so uh, it's a proposition that uh, shows how to, uh, well, how to reduce to the trivial case um, up, to, up to in some sense. So let's say you have two different vector bundles of the same ring. And uh, let's say you have a map of tom spaces between them. So you have a map from tom space of one thing to the tom space of the other thing. Then uh, the claim is that uh, we can check whether this map is an equivalence in SH. Uh, if and only if. Uh, and here is the reduction to the simple case. The degree at every generic point is a unit in the Grotten liquid group. So roughly speaking, if uh, it, is, it is an equivalence when you look at every generic point, or if you're connected, so uh, like in the nice case, at the generic point. So, so this A1 degree. Okay, so if this is a unit, at every generic point. Now I must say, and I'm really embarrassed because there are people in the audience who are experts in a one degree, have defined it, have used it to prove beautiful things. I'm a little cheating here because, uh, so degree at every point actually depends on the trivialization at that point. And so actually a one degree lives in twisted quantum liquid groups. And so there is a little bit of technical business going on, but I just wanted to explain the idea that um, what, uh, what we use is that um, a one so roughly that a one degree at generic points knows everything. So that is the idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why I can, I can be uh, a little imprecise. Okay. Um, um, ba -dum -ba -dum. Uh, more questions? So um, in the rest of the talk, I'd like to explain so how to use this to give you a proof sketch for line bundles of the, of the theorem.
OK, so until from now on, E is a line bundle. And so Kth atom separation on E is just L tens, so Kth tensor power of L. And so we want to be able to somehow compare the tom space of L and the tom space of Kth power of L, modular, like twisting them inside with a bunch of, so taking a bunch of copies. OK, so we start with just a map, uh, so the, the most naive map from the tom, so how to compare them? Well, we'd like to get a map at least. So uh, the most naive thing to start with is to consider the map from L to kth power of L, which just sends a vector to uh, a bunch of its copies. And so uh, it's a one degree at the generic point will be exactly this number k epsilon. So, uh, So this makes sense because, so in topology, the degree of, of such a thing would be k. So it's good that it's something that realizes to k. So we are good for now. Now the problem is, what's the problem? Ah, so the problem is that we'd like to be, so in the topological um, proof, uh, there is uh, the process of taking to the power, to taking to, to the power which equals degree. And we have a degree equal to a quadratic form. So it's not quite clear how to take something to a power, which itself is not a number, it's a quadratic form. So this k there, you know, like these guys here, they correspond to, to the degree. And now we have something more complicated going on. And so what we are trying to do then, so the, the, the step that is happening here, the first step is a creative step, how to like change this map a little bit so that its degree becomes either becomes a number, either k or uh, more generally a power of k. So we want to somehow fix, well, change uh, phi so that uh, its degree, um, okay, we can do it only stably, so fix phi stably. So that, well, the simplest thing would be if uh, it's, so there would be some different map, let's say phi prime. So the simplest thing would be its degree to be a number k, but more generally it will be k to the m for some number m. Okay, and so um, this is a creative task. So I will show you how, um, how one can do it. Uh, I mean, there, there are different ways in, in which you can do it. Uh, so for example, when, uh, uh, where can I write? So, um, okay, let's say k is odd, that's the easier situation. And then uh, what one can do is to define phi prime. So stably, the Grotendieck-Witt group acts on, uh, on our uh, maps, so it makes sense to to consider k epsilon well, uh, times, uh, sorry, makes sense to consider k epsilon times phi, but instead, okay, I need uh, something a little different. So I'll tell you in a sec what it is. So uh, k epsilon bar is, is uh, one, ah, no, it's okay. Actually, that's, no. Ah, yes, it's a little different from k epsilon, sorry. It's one plus uh, k minus one half times one plus minus minus one. So this is the difference with k epsilon. And so the claim is that degree of this guy will indeed be just k, not k epsilon. So degree of phi prime then is just k. Okay. So uh, in the ideal world, we would like to say that something like that happens when k is even, and it's more technical, uh, but the idea is uh, I can still, um, I think I can, meh, okay, um, do I have time, do I have time, sorry, one sec, give me a second, uh, yes, I have, okay, let me, let's give you one more example. Uh, 
uh, yes. So I just uh, so I had this map phi, and in, I I changed it to a map phi prime, which is something times phi, where something is one plus k minus one uh, divided by half times uh, instead of the hyperbolic form, I take one minus minus one. Okay. Yes. All good. Are we good? So um, uh, I just wanted to say that so finding so finding a way to change phi for, for this property to happen for the like nicer a one degree is a creative game. You can play it yourself. Maybe you come up with easier solutions. So, but what we do, for example, when k equals two, so the even case is is more complicated. But let's say when k equals two. So we have to do it in a couple steps. So one is, uh, and here you will see that we actually have to, to change uh, what, what is also going on here. So um, we consider phi prime to be a map from uh, Tom of L plus L to Tom space of L square plus, sorry, L square plus L square. Which is then, okay, so it's a, again, maybe you, if you try to come up with your own, you can come up with something else. What we do is consider a map uh, that sends uv to u times u minus v times v, and then here just u times v. And so uh, the degree of this thing is is the hyperbolic form. So not quite yet. We want it to be a power of two. We have a hyperbolic form. So what we then do is we, can, we, we change it one more time by taking, say, three times one minus, minus one times five prime. So just defining this uh, thing. And then its degree becomes, OK. So its degree can be computed to be the number eight. So that's the power of two. So we win the game. And general K more tricky, but whatever. You, you got the feeling. Uh, and you can find mistakes in what I'm saying. That's also good. OK, so uh, I just, OK, honestly, it's not so important. The point is that you can uh, do that in general, so you can so this want can be done in general. That's all I'm saying. And, and then um, the theory follows from the following statement. So using the well, let's call it fixed version of phi. The motivic Adams conjecture for line bundles follows from the following statement. And so uh, the statement is, again, a motivic version of a statement in topology, which was proved, which was used in the proof of the Adams conjecture. So in topology, it's called the mod k dole theorem. And so what we prove is the motivic mod k dole theorem. So this is the last thing that I want to formulate and explain how, uh, how we do it. OK, so it's the following statement. So let's say uh, we have the same assumptions. So uh, let's say f is a field of exponential characteristic e. So it's the exponential characteristic is 1 or p, p when it's a characteristic p. And s is, again, the base scheme connected regular over our field. And uh, so now here we assume uh, that k and e are, co so k is some number. 
such that um, K and E are co-prime. OK? And, um, okay, and now we play the game uh, that we want to, to do. So let's say we have, um, so assume we have two vector bundles over S such that, um, sorry, and, um, okay, uh, so, so assume we have two vector bundles and assume we have a map between the term spaces such that uh, it's a one degree at the generic point is the number k. So we're, we're going to apply this because, so in, in, in the previous step, we have actually uh, constructed this so, um, for L and L turns a k. So then uh, the claim is that there exists a number such that the, this kind of tom spaces are equivalent. Okay. So tom of a bunch of copies of E and a bunch of copies of V are equivalent in SH. Okay? So this is the thing we want because in the theorem that we are proving, we are comparing in general a vector bundle and its kth atom separation for line bundles. It's a line bundle and its kth power. And I have told you that when you start with a line bundle and its kth power, taking the simple map between their term spaces and changing it in some creative way, you can get a map whose degree at the generic point is a power of k. So, uh, okay, I'm saying here k. You know what? This is a simplified version. Uh, trust me, uh, this is uh, good enough. So what we need to, uh, to show is that given such a map with a one degree k at the generic point, that we get this equivalence in SH. And this, is, this statement itself is actually rather interesting because, um, because you don't have a map between vector bundles. You're just given a map between tone spaces. So it's rather tricky to get this kind of an isomorphism. Okay, and so the, in the last five minutes, let me tell you a few words how the, like the proof idea of this thing. So, um, okay, are we good? Proof idea? Okay, great. So, let me say again. So, we uh, have vector bundles and a map between their term spaces such that the A1 degree at the generic point is a number k. Okay, so the first thing to do is that what happens at the generic point? So, um, we want to look at the term space of one thing at the generic point and of the other thing at the generic point. And actually, uh, so at the generic point, they are isomorphic because, so we have asked uh, for K to be co-prime to the characteristic. So uh, we can divide this map at the generic point by K and so, um, so we, we're using here that k is invertible. Uh, so k is invertible, we can divide by k, and so we get uh, then a map uh, whose um, a1 degree is a unit, so it's an equivalence. So at the generic point, we're good. Or more generally, at an, like over an open subscheme, we'll be good. And so, um, now we had a proposition that in general, when you have a map between tom spaces, it is an equivalence when it's an equivalence on the generic points. So our job is to extend, so by, by the proposition we had, we need to extend this, uh, this business 
so phi at the generic point divided by psi. So we, we need to somehow extend this to the whole scheme. Uh, so this, as a map of tom spaces, to the whole scheme. Uh, so because if, if we manage to extend the map, then it will be a map who at the generic point is an uh, gives an isomorphism, so it is sorry equivalence, so it must be an equivalence. So it's a question about extending an equivalence from an open subset to, to the, or from the generic point to the whole scheme. And uh, this is where, um, where one can see how this funny business comes in. So the funny business, and so this is the last step. Uh, so to, to explain how we extend. Ah. Uh, I ask him why the, why the statement is called this way. I didn't, I did not, I, <laughs> I don't have a better explanation than the statement itself. Let me just, you know what, let me, I have one minute left. Let me say the last idea, how to, how to extend. So um, locally, so to extend something, so locally, okay, I'll just say in words. Uh, so locally, we look at the localization sequence for cohomotopy groups. Um, locally, we look at localization sequence uh, for the cohomotopy groups of the metric sphere spectrum. And so the localization sequence will tell us that we can ex uh, extend to the whole space when obstructions in co-dimension one vanish. Uh, so it tells that we can extend if abstractions, which will, abstractions to extension live in co-dimension one. Okay, and so, um, so to show, okay, so we want to show vanishing of certain abstractions that live in co-dimension one. And uh, to do that, okay, so to do that, my collaborators uh, prove a new vanishing result, uh, or like, um, not vanishing, so, uh, so to, do, to, to, to prove vanishing, so, uh, as a step here, there is a new result on bound boundedness of torsion in certain homotopy groups. Um, okay, so in, in some, in certain homotopy groups, if you ask, I can write later which ones, but the point is that so this boundedness of torsion in certain homotopy groups will give you nil potents of obstructions. So you can kill them by doing this k to the n power thing. So that's why the funny business comes in. So this, this implies nil potents of obstructions and so they can be killed by doing this O to the K to the N business. And that's a good time to end a talk one minute ago. If there are fans of homotopy groups of series, I can 